In today's video, we will run through 2017's crime horror, 1922, where a simple yet proud farmer in the year 1922 conspires to murder his wife for financial gain, convincing his teenage son to assist. But their actions have unintended consequences. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Now like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this video. The movie begins with Wilford James in 1930 walking through the streets of Omaha. He checks into a hotel room and looks around before sitting down to write a confession to a crime he committed in the year 1922. He starts by blaming the land owned by his wife as the issue that led to his crime. His wife, Arlette Christina Winters James, had 100 acres of land in Hemingford Home, Nebraska to her name. It was passed down to her from her father's death. Wilford wanted to merge that land with his own 80 acres of freehold farm and hopefully pass it to their son, Henry Freeman James, someday. According to Wilfred, in 1922, a man's pride was a man's land, and so was his son. There was just one issue. Arlette was never fond of farming life. She wanted to sell her part of the land to the Farmington Company. Wilfred asks Arlette what she wants to do with the money after selling the land at dinner one day. She suggests moving to Omaha and starting a business. Henry, however, opposes the idea and sides with his father. In frustration, Wilfred even offers to buy the land from her and pay her little by little in eight years. Arlette laughs at his idea and suggests one of her own. She wants them to sell both of their lands, split the money, and then get a divorce. Wilfred is extremely against it, mainly because he would be separated from Henry. Wilfred asks her for some time to think it over. Meanwhile, he thinks of going to the law, but his hatred for Arlette stops him. He tells her he won't let her sell the land without a fight. That day, he finds Henry and his girlfriend, Shannon Cottery, together in the basement. Shannon is their next door neighbor. Wilford decides to use Henry and Shannon's relationship to his advantage. He feuds Henry against his mother, telling him that she wants to take him away from his father and Shannon. Wilford tries to convince Henry to help him murder his own mother. That night during dinner, Henry lashes out at Arlette and tells her to leave so they can be a family again. Arlette tells Henry to discipline him. She tells him that no matter what, she will sell the land and bring Henry to Omaha. Arlette plans to open a dress shop there. Wilford finally convinces Henry to be on his side. He then makes Arlette believe that after thinking about it, he is ready to go to Omaha with her. Arlette is over the moon. She almost cannot believe it. She kisses Wilford for the first time in forever. That night, she gets drunk as Wilford and Henry watch her. Wilford brings her upstairs and puts her to bed. Then he asks Henry to help him. Henry wishes there was another way, but Wilford convinces him that the only way for him and Shannon to be together is to kill Arlette. Later, Henry walks into a room to Wilfred holding a knife. They slowly go into the couple's room, Henry with a sack and Wilfred with a knife. Henry sobs and wishes his mom goodbye before suffocating her with the sack. Wilfred then stabs her to death. Blood splatters everywhere. In 1922, Wilfred had murdered his wife with the help of his son. Wilfred and Henry then wrap Arlette's body with a bedsheet and bring her outside. Henry passes out before they get rid of the body. Wilfred drags the corpse and throws it into a dried well nearby. After the disposal of the body, the father and son clean the blood splattered on the ground. Wilfred packs up the bloodied mattress and all of Arlette's stuff to throw it in the well too. When he opens the well's cover to do that, he sees Arlette's body infested by rats. One even gets into her mouth. The horrifying sight makes him panic. He throws the luggage at them in the hope of getting them away from her body. Wilfred makes up a story about her leaving somewhere unknown to people. No one suspects him. A few days later, the Farmington Company lawyer comes looking for Arlette. The family tells him the same story. But the lawyer seems to be suspicious as to why she would miss an opportunity to sell the land at such a good price. However, he can do nothing. Wilfred has to quickly think of a plan to fill the well, so he brings a cow and makes it stand on top of the well's cover. The cover cannot handle its weight and breaks, sending the cow down to the bottom, but it doesn't stop moving, so Wilfred shoots it dead. He and Henry then fill the mice-infested well with the mud. That day, the lawyer sends the town sheriff to their house. He searches the house to make sure the family is not hiding Arlette. Wilfred shows him her clothes and belongings. When he is about to leave, they even invite him to have a look at the buried well. Wilfred narrates that summer was the best for the crops to grow on the farm and associates it with Satan rewarding him for his evil deeds. Shannon is worried about Henry's strange behavior. She voices her concerns to Wilfred. She thinks he might be having affairs with other girls at his school. Wilfred assures her that's not the case. Then she tells him she is sorry about Arlette's disappearance. Suddenly, the cows on the farm start making a lot of noise. Wilfred goes in to check when he finds the cow shed infested by rats. They had come in through a pipe that led to the well. The sight makes Wilfred puke. He shoves a cloth into the pipe to block it. When he comes back to the house, he sees Arlette's shadow, but it turns out to be Henry. The next day, he shields the pipe entirely. As he writes this in his notebook, Wilfred hears a mouse screeching in the back. The room's wall starts to crack. 
The next day, Henry comes to the house with news. Sharon is pregnant with his child. Henry wants to get married, but Wilfred tells him that he is too young. He brings up his mother and tells Wilfred that she would have allowed him some money to run away with Sharon. Just then, Sharon's father, Harlan Cottery, enters. He is the wealthiest of the farmers in the town. Wilfred is jealous of his brand new Cadillac and home water pipeline, but more so, he is jealous of his obedient wife. He wants to send Sharon to a Catholic home in Omaha until she gives birth, when she will give the child up for adoption. Sharon's stay will cost him $300. He knows, given Wilfred's poor status, that he cannot pay for half of it. So he asks him to pay at least $75. He also tells Wilfred that he should have let Arlette sell those 100 acres to Farmington. He would have money and a loving wife if he had done that. Henry doesn't agree to send Sharon off. He suggests to Wilfred that they can run away. He is against the idea. Henry lashes out at his father, saying that he cannot tell him what to do. He blames Wilfred for his mother's death and tells him there was another way. When Henry leaves for school the next day, Wilfred looks through Arlette's belongings, searching for money she must have saved. He finds $20 inside of her hat. The next day, he drives to a bank to take a loan of $35 to pay Harlan Cottery. He stays there for a while, but when he comes out, his truck is gone. He finds a note from Henry. It says that he has left with Sharon and taken the truck. In the note, he warns Wilfred that if he sends the sheriff looking for them, he will expose the truth about his mother's death. Wilfred is reading a book alone that night, but he cannot get the thought of Arlette's death out of his mind. He is startled when a drop of blood drops into his book. He looks up to see if it is just his leaky ceiling. He cannot sleep that night. The following day, the town sheriff informs Wilfred of a robbery in a nearby town. He thinks Henry could have done it. Wilfred, on the other hand, tells him that his boy is a gentleman and wouldn't do such a thing. Wilfred takes out a mortgage of $750 the next day. He had to fix the leak on the roof, but more than that, he had to work to keep himself sane during the winters. He returns home with the money when a rat bites his palm, wounding it severely. He steps on the rat, leaving it squashed and bloodied on the floor. He aids his injured palm and scrubs the blood off the floor with the other one. It is snowing the next day. He removes the bandage from his palm to see that the wound has been infected. He walks through the snow to his car to go to the doctor, but he has a hard time starting it with just one hand. In despair, he comes back to the house. The door starts creaking and banging continuously. He looks through it to see his wife's ghost standing outside the house. Scared, he runs inside and peeks through the hallway door. She is coming towards him. Wilfred then runs down to the basement. He falls from the stairs, and when he looks up, hundreds of rats along with Arlette's infected body come through the door. The rats get to Wilfred and surround him. He comes face to face with Arlette's spirit. Wilfred writes that she whispered secrets to him that only a dead woman could know. She tells him that Henry has become a robber in the city. He managed to sneak Sharon out of the Catholic home. They became a famous criminal duo called the Sweetheart Bandits and killed several people. She tells him how Sharon got shot and her child died. Wilfred begs her to stop and just kill him, slice his throat as he sliced hers, but she wants to make him suffer more. She tells him how Henry found Sharon dead in a bed and then killed himself afterward. In despair, Wilfred listens to her whisper of his son's death, who he cherished the most. A few days later, Wilfred goes to a doctor to get his wound checked. The infection has grown so much that it has to be amputated. The sheriff tells him that they had found the dead body of a woman in a ditch who was expected to be Arlette. Wilfred goes along with the story. After a few days, Henry's corpse is brought to the village on a train. At the station, Wilfred is surrounded by reporters who ask him about Henry's death. He is terrified to see Henry's decaying corpse. Several rats had infested his body. He kisses Henry's corpse on the head and orders him the finest coffin. He writes that no father should have to kiss his son for the last time, but if there is anyone who deserves it, it is him. Wilfred tries to sell the 100 acres of land to Shannon's father, who tells him to leave his property and never come back. With no other way, he sells it to a livestock company at a low price. Wilfred moves to Omaha and finds a job hauling pallets. By the time he completes writing this, his hotel room is completely filled with hundreds of rats. The corpses of Arlette, Henry, and Sharon stand in front of him. Henry holds the knife he used to kill Arlette. The movie ends as Wilfred narrates, in the end, we all get caught. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to see more of these movie summaries.